Welcome back to the Detroit Tigers franchise on MLB The Show 20. I'm your host, longtime listener. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment below. We're going out to Guaranteed Rate Field in Chicago to take on the White Sox. The Tigers still holding on to a lead in the American League Central, but it is tight here in September. I mentioned September because here's a call-up uh, with September call-ups and Ronaldo Lopez getting the start for the White Sox. The right-hander has got an ERA of 4.15 across just two starts for the White Sox so far this season. Starting things off, it's Les Delevsky draws a five-pitch walk, and with his speed, that is certainly not a very good omen for the White Sox. And there he goes. He's off and running and into second with a stolen base despite the pitch out. And next batter is Kristen Stewart. He's down on strikes. That's the first out, and that will bring up Burt Kohler. And on a 1-1 pitch, he hits a ground ball to the right side. That will advance Dulesky over to fir- over to third. But now two away for Aaron Judge. We'll take a look at the lineup. It's Dulesky in center, Stewart DHing, Burt Kohler at first, Aaron Judge in right, Santana in left, Gonzalez at second, Noisy at third, Gruyon catching, and Nico Goodrum batting ninth, playing shortstop. Then an 0-2 pitch to Judge is a nice change up there from Lopez to get him swinging and get out of the inning, so the leadoff walk is stranded. Now on to the Tigers. It's Matt Manning getting the spot start for them. He struggled earlier in the season, was uh, delegated to bullpen duty, and now has kind of pitched his way back to at least getting a shot here late in the season. Maybe Ron Garden higher thinking, and if he gets it going, maybe he's a, an option in the in the uh, staff for the playoffs. First batter is going to ground one over to short, and Robert is thrown out. That's going to be a close play, though. They call him safe. After review, it's clear that he was out, so he's retired for the first out. That brings up Marcus Simeon, caught looking at a curveball there. He's down on strikes for the second out. And then it's Eloy Jimenez on a 0-2 pitch, chasing a changeup out of the zone, so a strong first inning for Matt Manning. And we mentioned Garden Hire giving him a look, and some of that is because some of the other guys in the rotation are not throwing all that well, which we'll cover later in the episode. But here with one away in the second, it's Marwin Gonzalez on a 3-2 pitch, taking one into the gap for a double. Then after a fielder's choice, it's Davey Grion taking one into left for a base hit and an RBI with two down, and the Tigers are out in front, one nothing. Next batter is uh, Nico Goodrum. Hits one well, but that's handled for the final out of the inning. But the Tigers are leading 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the second. Matt Manning back to work, but he's going to start off the inning with a walk to Nomar Bazzara. And that's going to bring up DJ Stewart then, a 2-0 pitch. He grounds one over to third, and they go around the horn for the inning-ending double play as it's two for the price of one for the Tigers. On to the third. Les Dilevsky going to take one into shallow center field. This one will be handled for the first out of the inning. And we show you that so that we can show you the uh, standings in the American League Central as this was pretty tight coming in with the Tigers just two games up over Cleveland, two and a half up over Minnesota. So it is definitely uh, a race to keep an eye on as this season wraps up because the odd man out there is probably not going to even make the playoffs. Maybe one wild card peppered in there, but not two. Uh, starting off the third, it's Kristen Stewart, or with one away, it's Kristen Stewart getting drilled by a pitch there. Then Burt Kohler takes one through the right side, now first and second. And then later in the inning, two away for Domingo Santana, and he crushes a slider that was left over the heart of the plate. Lopez upset with himself as that pitch was definitely not located well. It's a three-run shot for Santana. 428 feet, his 18th of the year, and the Tigers now out in front, four to nothing. But they're not done yet. Two away in the inning, it's Marwin Gonzalez taking one into right center field for a base hit. That brings up Sheldon Noisy, and on a one-two pitch, he's going to go with a slider on the outside corner, take it deep into right center field. It's going to short hop the wall. Gonzalez is going to try and come around to score, and the throw is not going to be in time to get him. So it's five nothing Tigers now. Still here in the third inning, and that is going to do it for Reynaldo Lopez. This inning got away from him, and the White Sox turn into Taylor Widener out of the bullpen. The right-hander has struggled a little bit this year, and with a five-run deficit, he's going to have to be pretty sharp, try and keep the White Sox in this one. 
as this thing unfolds in the early going. First batter he faces is Davey Grion, slices one into left, kind of inside outs that one, and that's going to make it first and third and bring up Nico Goodrum. But he is going to take one into center field. That ball was hit well, but Robert able to run that one down for the final out of the inning. So the Tigers put up a four spot in the, in the third inning, take a five-run lead, but Widener able to at least get him out of the inning without any further damage. Now on to the bottom half. It's Matt Manning going back to work, but he's going to start off the inning by walking Yasmani Grandal. Close pitch there. Now with one away, it's going to take a ball into left center field for a base hit, and that's going to make it first and second. Still just one out. Now Luis Robert. Takes one into right field. Aaron Judge able to handle that one. No advance on the play. So now two down for Marcus Simeon. And a 2-2 pitch gets him out in front. He chops one down to third. Noisy able to field. And they get the out. And that's going to keep it 5 nothing after three innings. Les Dilevsky starts off the inning. As Widener was kind of out of position to try and field that one. And it turns into an infield single as a result. Then next batter is Kristen Stewart. 1-2 pitch to him. Is hanging over the middle of the plate with a fastball. He hits it deep to center field. This ball is way back. It's going to go off the glove of Luis Robert. Confusion on the bases as you see Dilevsky kind of rounded second there but then held. Stewart was already on his way to second. So there's two Tigers standing on second. And one of them is going to be retired. But after a fielder's choice, it's Aaron Judge going up the middle for an RBI single to make it 6-0. Then Domingo Santana gets a hanger here. Takes it deep to right field, but a nice running grab from Nomar Mazzara. Catches that one over the shoulder to end the inning. But the Tigers add to their lead, and it's now 6-0 as we head to the bottom of the fourth. And Matt Manning still in control, just one hit allowed to this point. And here he gets Eloy Jimenez swinging. Then it's Nomar Mazzara down on strikes. The White Sox would go scoreless in the fourth, but then in the bottom of the fifth with nobody away, it's going to it's going to be DJ Stewart taking one off the wall in deep right center field for a leadoff double and a chance now for the White Sox to hopefully get something going. Next batter is Monte Grandal. He goes down swinging. That's the first out. That's going to bring up uh, Zach Collins now with two away. Takes one back up the middle, and that will score a run. So the White Sox are on the board thanks to the RBI single from the nine hitter. And it's Luis Robert. He's out in front of a, a breaking ball there, but that ball is going to stay fair down the line. He's headed to second, so it's now going to be second and third. Two away for Marcus Simeon, and on a 1-2 pitch, he hits a routine grounder to the right side. Gonzalez handles. That will end the inning, and it's going to be 6-1 to one after five innings here in Chicago. So Matt Manning doing a good job for the Tigers in his spot start, allowing just one run in those five innings of work. Now on to the sixth. It's a five-run lead, but Nico Goodrum not comfortable with it. He's going to drop down a bunt, take advantage of the shift there, so he's on with a leadoff single. Now 0-2 to Dilevsky. That ball's in the dirt. Nico going to take off and get into second, so that's going to go down as a wild pitch. Now a runner in scoring position. Next batter was Kristen Stewart. He's down on strikes. That's the second out. Now it's Burt Kohler. 0-1 pitch to him is sliced into shallow left center field. But that will be handled by the shortstop for the final out of the inning. And we are still going to be going to the sixth at 6-1. Six to one. But Xiaoqing Chang coming on in relief for the Tigers uh, with a five-run lead. They're probably trying to get some uh, extended work from him. And starting things off is Eloy Jimenez. He takes one down the left field line. And immediately Chang is in trouble as there's going to be a runner in scoring position and nobody out in the inning. Next batter is Nomar Mazzara. 1-2 pitch to him is a slider down and in. He slices one the other way, though, with it, and that's going to be fair. Scores the run from second. It's 6-2, a, a single, but not a bad pitch from Chang there. you got to feel for him. This was uh, one of those back foot sliders that's usually really tough for somebody to handle, but a nice job of taking that inside out the other way, and it's 6-2, but... Here comes Chang. He's going to get uh, Jose Ramirez looking on a backdoor slider. That's the first out. Then DJ Stewart, 1-2 pitch, is a fastball up that he couldn't touch. That's two down. Then Yasmani Grandal is looking at that same pitch. So Chang bounces back after the leadoff hits to start the inning. And we are going to uh, head to the seventh with a score of 6-2. to two. Dane Dunning coming on in relief for the White Sox. This guy has been rocked this year. As you can see, his numbers across 131 innings. His ERA is pushing seven. Now, with nobody out, it's Aaron Judge taking one down the right field line that bounces over the wall for a ground rule double to start the inning. 
Then it's Domingo Santana, 3-2 pitch. Hit to the right side, so Judge will advance to third with just one away. Then it's Sheldon Noisy, gets one right down the chute, but hits a line drive that's caught for the final out of the inning. And the runner is stranded after the leadoff double. Bottom of the seventh now, one away, and it's a swing and strikeout on Zach Collins. Then it's Luis Robert, 3-2 pitch is high for ball four, so a base runner with two down, and it brings up Marcus Simeon, 2-2 pitch to him, is hit to right field, and Aaron Judge going to handle that one without any trouble. So we go to the eighth, and it is still 6-2 Tigers. Now on to the top of the eighth, it's Nico Goodrum leading off, actually with one away, taking one deep to left field, and that ball is going to get out of here. That pitch was away, but he goes with it. It's his 17th of the year, 371 feet. Not necessarily a bad pitch from Dunning. It was up a little bit, but it was on the outside corner. Nice piece of hitting, and this ball was just out of the reach of the leaping try from Eloy Jimenez. That makes it 7-2, to two, and that would be your final as Carvajal came on late uh, with a couple of guys on there, but never in doubt for the most part as the Tigers take it 7-2. A three-run shot from Domingo Santana earns him player of the game honors. Matt Manning got the win going five innings, four hits, one wa or two walks, struck out five, and just one earned. So a good start from him. Ronaldo Lopez got the loss, two and two-thirds, was doing okay until that four, uh, third inning where he just kind of lost control, and that was it for him. 14 hits and one walk for the Tigers. They only struck out four times, so these guys were putting the ball in play with some authority. Nico Goodrum and Santana both had home runs. 53rd stolen base of the year for Delevsky, and the pitching was pretty good for the Tigers up and down. Just six hits allowed. They walked five, but they struck out 12, and that'll do it for this one. The Tigers take this one by a score of 7-2. to two. Now, before we go out to more action, I want to show you the look at the standings as we kind of come down the final stretch here. Just a couple of games to go in the season. The Indians trailing the Tigers by a game and a half. The Twins are three games back, so they pretty much have to win out and get some help to have a chance. And they have a chance to um, you know, kind of control some of their destiny here as they are taking on the Tigers at home here at Target Field. Again, three games left to go in the season. And they've got an opportunity to perhaps squeak into the playoffs if they can pull off a couple of victories. On the hill for the Twins is Devin Smeltzer. He is 18-9 and on the year. This will be his 33rd start of the season, and he's got a 3.26 ERA, but a nice whip of 1.09 for the crafty left-hander. Doesn't throw real hard, but hits his spots pretty well, and he's going to get off to a pretty good start as he jams Lev Stileski here. Pops this one up in foul territory, but that's going to be caught for the first out. And now we'll take a look at the Tigers lineup in this one as it's Delevsky in center, Goodrum at short, Kohler at first, Aaron Judge in right, Domingo Santana in left, Walker will DH, Noisy at third, Davey Grion catching, and Royce Lewis getting the start at second base, and he's batting ninth. Now with two away, it's Burt Kohler. He's going to take one into left field, but this ball will be caught for the final out of the inning. So it's a 1-2-3 third for Smeltzer, and it just took him nine pitches. Now on the hill for the Tigers is their ace, Jordan Belazovic. He's got 15 wins on the year, a 3.93 ERA, 1.26 whip. Was on fire coming out of the gates this season, but then kind of just sputtered uh, over the last several months. He hasn't been bad, but hasn't been ace-like. But in any case, he's off to a good start here as he gets bucked into roll over one. That's the first out. Now we take a look at the Twins lineup in this one. It's Byron Buxton in center field, then Arias at second, Polanco DHing, Mitch Garver catching, Kepler in right, Vogelbach at first, Baez playing short, Wade Jr. in left, and Jordan Zimmerman playing third. A lot of good averages up and down that lineup, so look for a lot of balls to be put in play in this one, right? Maybe not so much. Here's Arias. He's going to take one into shallow center field. That gets down for a base hit, but now... Jordan Belazovic is going to go on lockdown mode. Here's Jorge Polanco, ground ball to second. Uh, Royce Lewis fields that, tags the runner, so they get one. Now two down in the inning for Mitch Garver. 2-2 two -two pitch to him is a changeup that is very well located, gets him swinging, and that ends the inning.
Top of the second, 0-2 pitch to Judge. He's out in front of one, hits it well. Knocked down at third, he's going to recover, and the throw is in time to get Aaron Judge at first on a bang-bang play. Then with two away, it's Lawrence Walker. He turns on one but doesn't quite get his arms extended. That one's going to come up just shy of the track and be caught for the final out. So we are scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second. And there's Max Kepler, foul tip, but it's hand, uh, handled by uh, Grion for the first out. Then with two away, it's Javi Baez chasing a slider off the plate. A couple of strikeouts there in the inning for Blazovic, and he looks to be locked in. Here's Davey Grion, takes one up the middle with one away, a 3-2 pitch that is into center field for a base hit. Then with two down, it's Les Dilevsky. That pitch is high for ball four. That makes it first and second and brings up Nico Goodrum. And a 2-1 pitch, he turns on this one, hits it pretty well to left, but another running grab out there in left field to end the inning. And it is still scoreless as we go to the bottom of the third, but Blazovic still in control. He gets Jordan Zimmerman swinging there for the second out of the inning, and that is four Ks for Belazovic. Then it's Byron Buxton, 2-2 pitch, back up the middle, handled with ease, and through three innings, we are scoreless here at Target Field. Now on to the top of the fourth. Burt Kohler starting things off, takes one into shallow left field. That's going to get down for a base hit, and the Tigers with an opportunity to strike first here with a leadoff base runner. Now Aaron Judge gets one to hit, takes it into left field just through the hole, and now it's first and second, still nobody out for Domingo Santana. 1-2 pitch to him as a slider down. He goes down and golfs it into deep left center field. This is going to go off the wall. Kohler will come around to score. It's going to be a single for Santana as he kind of had to hold because Judge wasn't sure if that was going to get down or not. But nonetheless, it's one nothing Tigers. Runners on the corners, nobody out. And Lawrence Walker, wasting no time, takes the first pitch into right field. So now it's 2-0. Runners on first and second. And then later in the inning with two away, it's Royce Lewis watching a ball high. That's going to load the bases for Les Dolevsky. And an 0-1 pitch to him was very hittable. On the outside part of the plate, he lifts one to deep right center field. A long run for Buxton, but he gets there to make the catch. That'll end the inning, but the Tigers strike first as they now lead this thing. Two to nothing, heading to the bottom of the fourth, where Belazovic goes back to work. Two way in the inning, he gets Mitch Garver frozen there, and that is it for the Twins in the fourth, as Belazovic just one hit allowed to this point. Now the Twins are going to turn to Kyle Funkhauser out of the bullpen. This is a former Tiger, now Twin, that he's got a rough ERA at 6.33. There, first batter he faces is uh, Nico Goodrum. Fell behind 3-0 and and then just grooved one, and Nico made him pay as he takes that one deep and gone to right field. His 18th of the year, a solo shot, 389 feet. Not what the Twins were looking for with the rel uh, relief coming from Funkhauser, but nonetheless... He is still going to have to get working here as now it's Burt Kohler getting a base hit. Then he picks him off at first. That's the first out of the inning. And Funkhauser now trying to kind of get settled in here, keep the Twins in it. It's Aaron Judge on a 2-2 pitch. A high curveball that got him frozen. Then Domingo Santana, another 2-2. That one was hittable, but he got under it. Popped it up on the infield, and that's it for the Tigers in their half of the fifth. The twins got to get some work done, though, as Nico Goodrum, 3 Run lead for the Tigers thanks to his solo shot. And now it's Max Kepler on in the bottom of the fifth. Chases one in the dirt. Gruyon sends it down to first for the first out. Then it's almost an instant replay here as Vogelbach chases one in the dirt. And Gruyon sends that one down to first for the second out of the inning. Now in the sixth, it's Lawrence Walker starting things off. Takes one in the left field for a base hit. And Funkhauser in trouble again. And there goes Walker on a 3-2 pitch. He is in with a stolen base. Noisy uh, swung through it for the first out of the inning. But a runner in scoring position now for David Gruyon. Checked his swing on a 3-2 pitch and did not go, so that'll make it first and second. Sets up a double play opportunity, and here's Royce Lewis on a 3-1. That's high. Now the base is loaded, and Funkhauser in some trouble here. There's Les Dolesky, though, chopping one to the right side. Only play is going to be to go to first with it, so a run comes in to score, makes it 4 nothing Tigers. Now Nico Goodrum with two down, back up the middle. Handled by Funkhauser, so he escapes damage again, but the Tigers add another one, and the Twins are starting to run out of opportunities here as it is now 4 nothing. We head to the bottom of the sixth, and they still have just that solo hit from all the way back in the first inning to their credit. And Belazovic not letting off the gas as he gets Wade Jr. looking there. Then a 3-2 
to uh, Byron Buxton, or a two-strike pitch, let, rather, gets him frozen on a beautiful two-seamer coming on in the back corner. And now the Tigers go back to work offensively, though. But Funkhauser, a solid inning here. He gets them in order. Just a routine chopper there from Santana. Now on to the seventh. The Tigers, interestingly, going to pull Belazovic. He has really just been dealing. And they turn to Spencer Turnbull, perhaps thinking about getting Belazovic uh, nice and rested for a playoff run. And it's going to work out as here comes uh, Spencer Turnbull, gets a swing and strike out there for the second out of the inning. Now with two away, it's Mitch Garver going up the middle for a base hit. And that brings up Max Kepler, 1-2 pitch to him. He had one to hit there, but got under it, a little, little bit late on it, and that'll do it for the Twins in the seventh. So now we go to the eighth. Zach Little coming on for the Twins. He's got a 4.78 ERA. You see his numbers there so far on the season. And a 1-2 pitch to Lawrence Walker. Looking on the outside corner, tough call there. That's the first out. Now Sheldon Noisy, 0-2. He's late on a fastball. He's down on strikes for the second out. Then it's David Grion on an 0-1 pitch. He got one to hit, takes it into left center field. That ball's in the gap and is going to bounce and hit the wall for a two-out double for uh, David Grion. Then a 1-2 pitch to Royce Lewis was a slider away. He was looking for it there. That ball was up, and he takes it deep and gone to right field. A two-run shot and an absolute backbreaker there, as that's his 12th of the year, but makes it 6 nothing. and the Twins are in some serious trouble with their season on the line. They still can't get the bats going. Turnbull back to work here in the 8th, gets a couple of strikeouts there, holds them scoreless, and now with two out in the ninth, Arias slices one into left. That's a base hit, so they are not giving up yet. Next batter, Jorge Polanco, 0-1 pitch to him, is a sinker left right down the middle, and he yanks it down the line and off the foul pole for a two-run shot. His 24th, it's now 6-2 to Twins, so they're still alive. As that ball goes 368 feet, but that brings up Mitch Garver, and he swings at a slider off the plate to end the inning and end the season for the Twins, uh, at least their hopes of a playoff push, as they are now eliminated from playoff contention as the Tigers will win the AL Central, the Indians will capture a wild card berth, and Belazovic was a big part of that today with his six innings, just one hit allowed, no walks, and struck out nine against a potent Twins offense. Devin Smeltzer didn't pitch all that poorly, just four innings, though, of work, five hits, two walks, uh, two earned, and is saddled with the loss. Uh, Spencer Turnbull got the save. Ten hits and five walks for the Tigers. They struck out seven times, got homers from Goodrum and Lewis. And an excellent job by the pitching staff, allowing just four hits. The two-run shot allowed by Turnbull was the only blemish, but they struck out 13 in this one. That's going to wrap up the regular season in terms of action. So we're going to now take a look at some standings around the league, some stats and awards, and then we'll wrap this one up. The Rays win 101 games in the East and just run away with that one. 16 games ahead of the Blue Jays and Yankees when it was all said and done. So an impressive year for them, and they get home field throughout. The Tigers go 92-70 and 70 to capture the AL Central in what turned out to be a really tight race there. Just two games ahead of the Twins and three ahead of the, uh, or th two ahead of the Indians, three ahead of the Twins. The Angels take the West with the A's capturing the wild card there, and they will host the Indians in the American League wild card game. The Braves took the East by 12 games over the Nationals. Uh, not a really cl close race right there. The Brewers, six games up over the Cubs, who also took a wild card. Rough years for the Pirates and Cardinals, as you can see. Then in the West, again, it's the Dodgers, 103 wins, best in all of baseball. The Padres, 88 and 74, capture a wild card, and it's going to be the Cubs hosting them in the National League wild card game. Now for league leaders, it's Anthony Redone capturing the American League batting title with a mark of 342 on the season. Aaron Judge hit 305 on the year, good for 10th best in the American League. For home runs, uh, let's move along here. Home run leader was J.D. Martinez with 52, edging out uh, Rendon and Reyes near the top of that ch uh, chase. Aaron Judge tied for fifth with 40 on the year, so an impressive year for the big free agent pickup. And there's J.D. Martinez leading the league in RBIs with 135, and Aaron Judge right on his heels at 132. Burt Kohler 10th best with 110. So good to see the young first baseman still swinging the bat well. 
Uh, Austin Meadows, 122 runs scored, was best in the league. There's Burt Kohler, fifth best in that category. Delevsky with 58 stolen bases, not even close in that race. And Travis Jankowski with 20, uh, despite limited playing time on the year. So an impressive feat for him to put up that kind of mark uh, in that category. For on-base percentage, it was Anthony Rendon at 432. Very impressive number for him. There's Aaron Judge, fourth best in that category. Rendon with the best slugging in the league. And Judge, sixth best in that category. And there's Rendon, Meadows, Martinez, all uh, in the stratosphere in terms of their OPS for the year. And Judge, yet again, there near the top. Clevenger, with 19 wins, was best in the American League with Bieber, Cole, Smeltzer, a whole slew of guys that had 18 on the year. And then the Tigers, Casey Mize and Belazovic, led the team with 16 wins apiece. J.B. Wendelkin with 49 saves was best in the American League. Um, kind of interesting to not see Hicks on that list, but in any case, he still had a pretty decent year for us. There's Chirinos with the best ERA in the American League. And Garrett Cole, 241 strikeouts, edged out Blake Snell. Jordan Blazovic with 218, so eighth best from him. Pretty impressive number for a guy that's not necessarily what we would think of as a strikeout guy. He also had three complete games, which was tied for the best in that category. Innings pitched title goes to Shane Bieber with 225 and a third. And there's Jordan Blazovich, fourth on that list at 214 and a third. For whip, it's Yanni Torinos at 1.03, edging out his teammate Ryan Yarborough. Uh, and then Blazovich down there at the bottom of that list at 1.23, not a bad mark for him. And he had the second best pitching war in the American League behind Noah Syndergaard. So an impressive year for the guy that was our ace. Um, when, when you actually kind of look at everything on paper afterwards, Anthony Rendon, a 10.5 war is just astronomical. So a great year for him. Batting average title goes to Francisco Lindor in the national league at 347 and Luis Fernandez. Remember, this is the rookie catcher for the Mets. He hit 333, 24 home runs, and stole 16 bases. He's 21 years old and a pretty decent defensive catcher as well. So this guy could be an absolute monster behind the dish uh, if he develops. So keep an eye out for him. Pete Alonzo with 52 home runs uh, is best in the National League. Tied for, uh, for best in all of baseball with J.D. Martinez. Um, there was Ian Happ led the league in RBIs. Mud Rosario tied with Trey Turner with 30 stolen bases apiece. Uh, for on-base percentage, it's Francisco Lindor at 433, edging out Chris Bryant. And Ian Happ, best slugging percentage in the National League, so a really good year for him. Uh, and four guys over 1,000 in the OPS category, as you could see there. Herman Marquez with another impressive season as he picks up 20 wins along with Chris Paddock, tops in the league in that category. Um, Dustin May had a very impressive year, as we'll see here in a second. Ken Giles, 53 saves, just edged out Josh Hader in that category. And there's Dustin May, 2.22 ERA, 19-4 and record, and a 1.07 whip across 211 innings. This guy was outstanding for the Dodgers this year. There's Steven Strasburg, 250 strikeouts best in the National League, and Marquez led the league in innings pitched with 224. Looking at whip, it's Miles Mikolas with .98 on the season, and there's Marquez with a 1.0 whip. Very impressive numbers he's been putting up out in Colorado. Uh, so hard to argue with the fact that that guy has been the best pitcher in that franchise. Um, but in any case, the pitching war category title goes to Luis Castillo, 6.2. And for the batting war, it's Francisco Lindor at 9.9 .9 on the year. Now we'll look at some awards around the league. As for the American League MVP, it's J.D. Martinez and Anthony Rendon and Aaron Judge uh, coming in second and third respectively in that category. Blake uh, Snell takes the Cy Young Award, edging out his teammate Mike Clevenger. And Anthony Rendon wins the batting title, as we talked about earlier. Taylor Rogers, reliever of the year award for the Twins. Impressive year for the lefty. For rookie of the year, it's the Red Sox. Uh, first baseman Johnny Corcoran, he hit 285 with 19 home runs and 59 driven in, so an impressive year for him. Rendon gets the Hank Aaron Award um, for the first time. There's Shane Bieber uh, with the gold glove. Nate Lowe got it at first base. Gavin Biggio at second. Matt Chapman at third. 
Marcus Simeon picks one up at shortstop. Joey Gallo gets one in left field. Uh, interesting there. There's Tyler Naquin gets one in center. And Aaron Judge got one for the Tigers with a perfect season fielding percentage-wise in right field. J.D. Martinez, Silver Slugger Award. Mitch Garver, another one behind the dish. No surprise there. Burt Kohler got another one at first base. Third year in a row for the youngster, so an impressive year for him yet again. He got off to a slow start, actually, but turned it on down the stretch. Glaber Torres got it at second. Anthony Rendon picks up the Silver Slugger at third base. Bogarts with another one at shortstop as he just continues to roll at that position. Aaron Judge gets one in the outfield along with Austin Meadows and Eddie Rosario. So that's what you have for Silver Slugger Awards in the American League. Now we will take a look at the National League as the MVP is going to go to Ian Happ. So impressive year for him. And uh, he collects some hardware there with the MVP in the NL. Dustin May got the Cy Young, edging out Jose Barrios and Chris Paddock. Batting title went to Francisco Lindor. Josh Hader got the Reliever of the Year award. Brent Honeywell Jr., Rookie of the Year, edging out his teammate, which I think is a hoax because Luis Fernandez putting up those kind of numbers as a rookie catcher, there's no reason he shouldn't have got the uh, Rookie of the Year. In any case, Gold Glove goes to, to Marquez. Langoliers behind the dish uh, again in uh, Atlanta. There's Freddie Freeman picking up another one. Ozzy Albies. So the Braves got a ton of guys in the Gold Glove categories there. There was Riley at third, finished second in that category. Rosario got one in short. Another gold glove for the, the Braves in left field there. Kiermaier got one in center. And in right field, it was Bryce Harper getting the nod in that category over Mookie Betts, which is garbage. Silver Slugger goes to Jack Flaherty. Ramuto picks one up at catcher. Uh, interesting, because remember, we traded to get Gruyon um, as they just kind of had him sitting there not getting a lot of playing time. So that worked out for the Phillies. Keston Weir got one at second. Arenado at third yet again. Lindor gets one at short. Ian Happ picks one up in, uh, in the outfield along with Michael Conforto and Cody Bellinger. Now we'll take a look at the Tigers' stats. Brandon Dixon, very impressive year. Limited performance, just 65 at bats, but he swung the bat very well for us. Aaron Judge cannot stress enough how big of an acquisition this has been for the Tigers as he had an outstanding year. Jankowski was fabulous in his limited action. Burt Kohler, 300 average, 31 homers, and 110 driven in, along with 15 steals. So he is pretty much the uh, the core of this organization going forward. Royce Lewis, a very solid year for the rookie. Domingo Santana, uh, 276 with 20 homers and just 388 at bats. So we will absolutely take that from him. Kristen Stewart, solid year, 287, 16 home runs, and a career-high 69 driven in. Lawrence Walker was pretty good for us. Marwin Gonzalez, the power numbers were really impressive from this guy, considering we didn't even think we were going to use him that much this year. Nico Goodrum had a pretty solid year. Les Dilevsky never quite got the batting average up to where we wanted it, but 257 is not terrible, uh, and with his speed, he's going to keep that leadoff role. Davey Gruyon, a decent season at 260 with 13 home runs. Sheldon Noisy, the average is a little down from where we would like it, but uh, we're okay with what he's given us so far. And then Gabriel Moreno, a little bit of a rough go this year, but he's young and has tons of time to develop at the plate. For pitchers, uh, let's take a look, uh, starting with the whip as kind of our uh, benchmark here, and it's Tim Meza. Uh, 1.17 whip, very solid year for the lefty, uh, really impressed with what we got from him. And then another impressive year for Santiago Carvajal, the youngster, did very well for us out of the bullpen. Belazovic pitched pretty well for us down the stretch. Casey Mize put together a pretty good season with 16 wins. Jordan Hicks was lights out at the beginning of the season and then really sputtered down the stretch. So he's something that we need to kind of keep an eye on in terms of how he performs out of the bullpen this year in the playoffs. Herodas Vizcaino was pretty solid for us all year long. Uh, Dominic Billingsley struggled for a while, but ended up kind of getting it back together towards the end of the season. Uh, but that ERA is still up from where we would like it. Daniel Norris, pretty decent year for us. Um, with some starts and a lot of work out of the bullpen. Tarek Skubal was just kind of up and down most of the season, finished the season on a high note though, so probably pitched his way into the uh, playoff rotation, whereas Matthew Boyd, on the other hand, just was awful down the stretch and may have pitched his way out of a job in the playoffs despite his kind of veteran presence. I'm not sure what we're going to do with him. 
Matt Manning, uh, rough year early on, but managed to kind of put it back together towards the end of the season. And Xiaoqing Chang was just kind of okay all season long. That will do it for this episode as you get a look at the national or that the uh, playoff bracket there. But please be sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and comment below. And we will see you all next time.